So if I've got these numbers, I can uh, now do basic arithmetic. And what's important here is i squared is minus 1 from the previous page, or the page before that. So if I want to add two numbers, I can add their real parts. And then I can add the imaginary parts. Right, so if I factor this i through, I get exactly that number. Uh, now if I want to multiply two things, i got to be careful. I just have to FOIL this out. So I have a times c plus a times d times i. And now I focus on this. It's going to be b times i times c. And then I have b times i times d times i. And what is this going to be? This is going to be, so I've got the real parts. So i times i is minus 1. So that's going to be ac minus b, oops, d is the real part. If I collect the imaginary parts, I have AD and BC. Okay, what's important here is you just FOIL this out, do the arithmetic as normal, but just be careful that when you have I times I, you know that's going to be a minus 1. Now there's an interesting special case here. If I take A plus BI multiplied by A minus BI, what happens? So let's FOIL this out. So I have the A. I have A times A. A squared, oops, A times a minus BI is AB times I but minus. Now I take this thing, I can have B times I times A is plus A times B times I. And now I'm going to have minus B squared times I squared, that term times that term. Notice these two terms cancel. I'm left with this, but what is this term? This is going to be a squared. This is a minus 1, so I'm left with a plus b squared. And this is a real number. Now go back and think about that triangle I had on the previous page. This is a and that's b. r squared is a squared plus b squared. So this is a nice way to get the distance squared from the origin. If I think about this as a coordinate in the complex plane. I can use this result now if I want to do division. So this is a perfectly fine number to leave it like this, but when you look at this, it's kind of hard to try to compare two different complex numbers. So if I can put this in a form, so it's in rectangular form, this is going to make it much easier to try to look at two different numbers and see how they compare. So here's what I can do. I'm going to leave the numerator alone. I want to get this i out of the bottom. So if I multiply by c minus di, whatever I do to the bottom, I've got to now do to the top. So I'm multiplying the top and the bottom by the same number. What am I going to get? Now if I FOIL this out, I'm going to have A times C, then I'm going to have A minus DI, now I'm going to have plus B times I times C, now minus B times D times I squared. Now if I FOIL out the bottom, I'm going to have C times C, minus C times D times I, and now I'm going to have D times I times C, minus D times D times I squared. Now let's clean this up. So let's see, I have, this is a real number, I squared is minus 1, so that's a real number. So I'm going to have AC plus BD, because this is minus a minus BD. This is going to be imaginary, that's imaginary. So this is going to be BC minus ADI. And now on the bottom, what's going to happen, these two things cancel. This is a minus 1, so I'm going to have C squared plus D squared. 
this is now a real number and I can just divide everything so there's the real part is this divided by this the imaginary part is going to be this thing divided by c squared plus d squared like so um, so now we don't expect you to memorize all these crazy formulas it's a lot but you should be able to do things like foil things out you should be able to repeat this and foil it out you should be able to foil this out and get this result and you should know this trick excuse me to divide by C minus this thing in order to write this so notice now this is not in rectangular polar or Euler form but this now is in rectangular form. So as an example, suppose we have this. So suppose I want to write this now in Cartesian or rectangular form. What do I do? Let me first write out e to the i pi over 2. That's going to be cosine of pi over 2 plus i sine of pi over 2. I'm going to leave the rest alone. So let's just call this number z. So let's simplify this. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. So that's just going to be 0 plus i times 2 minus i over 5 plus 2i. Let me multiply the 3i through. So this is going to be 6i minus 3i squared. I'm going to leave the denominator alone. So this is going to be a minus 3 times minus 1. So I have that. Let me just put this in this form just because it's a little more familiar. And now I want to get rid of this. So this is not yet in uh, Cartesian form because I'm dividing by this. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 5 minus 2i because I know something nice is going to happen here when I foil it out. So let's see. So I'm going to have 3 times 5 plus 3 times minus 2i. So 3 times minus 2 will give me the minus 6 plus 6 times 5i then I'm going to have plus, oops, I'm going to have a minus, 6 times a minus 2 is going to give me a minus 12, i times i is i squared. Then for the denominator, let's see, I'm going to have 5 times 5, minus 5 times 2 times i. I'm going to have plus 2i times 5 is plus 10i. I'm going to have a minus 2 times 2 times i squared. All right, let's make this clean. So I'm going to have a 15. Let's do this. So I'm going to have 15. 30 my i minus 6i is going to be 24i. i squared is a minus 1, so I'm going to have a plus 12. Here I'm going to have a 25. Minus 10i plus 10i is 0. And then i squared is minus 1. So I get that. And now let's finally clean this up. So I'm going to have 27 minus 24i over 29. Now I'm just going to divide through the, by the 29. And now I have the number in Cartesian form. Uh, again, what's important here is just know the basic ideas of multiplication, foiling things out, and just being patient, doing one step at a time. Don't memorize all these formulas because it's just too much. And just try to do it one step at a time and don't rush it. All right, uh, one example here, last example, and or I should say last definition, is this idea of something called the complex conjugate. And what did we have? We had a plus bi. For Cartesian form, if 
I just flip the sign of this thing, then that new result is going to be the complex conjugate. And so if we call this z, the notation is z bar. And so for, if I give them z is a plus bi, if I flip the sign for the imaginary part, that's going to give us z bar or the complex conjugate. So ex for example, if z is equal to 3 plus 7i, z bar is going to be 3 minus 7i. Or if I tell you z is 8 minus 6i, z bar is going to be 8. I'm just going to flip the sign to get something like that. So quick examples, if I give you z1 is 4 plus 2i, z1 bar is 4 minus 2i, if I give you z2 is 8 minus 3i, z2 bar is 8 plus 3i. Uh, quick note, if you do the complex conjugate twice, you get the same thing back. Right? And the reason is, if I give you z is equal to a plus bi, I'm going to flip the sign, if I take the complex conjugate, if I take the complex conjugate of this, I'm going to flip that sign, and notice I get the exact same thing back. All right, thank you.